So we're pretty close to lunch, but I'd like to uh, validate the exercises that we explore. And why are we doing what we're doing? Now we do it because there's this one famous guy named Jesus that we've fallen in love with. And every time we look at him, he happens to melt our hearts again, you know, and we'd have, you know, crazy stuff happens that he, like, hey, this is real, guys, you know. And so, so that's the primary reason. But is there another reason? And I think we have a biblical passage here I'd like to unlock and open up just a little bit to us. And so I think we're done just for a second. John, thank you so much. Yeah. I want to just read Hebrews 5, the very end of it. And I, one of the distinctives, I think, that makes us different, I'm not saying better, it makes us a little different than maybe normal kind of average church gatherings is first of all we're inviting everyone's participation this is first Corinthians uh, uh, 1426 I believe it is it says when you come together each of you have something so what we're doing is valuing the each one that's one value but when we begin to move into exercises or what we call activations what is the purpose give me give me a reason why would we want to do that is this just for fun and games okay so let me give you a value that I think may have more impact than we we even even realized so this is Hebrews 5 it says uh, uh, 12 through 14 for through uh, for though by this time you ought to be teachers you need someone still to teach you, again, the first principles of the oracles of God. You come to need milk rather than solid food. Are you kidding me? Whoever the writer of a Hebrew is, that, that's not exactly a encouraging word. You know what I'm saying? This is going backwards rather than forward. So could we find a cause or reason, or maybe some way not to do that? Is there some truth or gold in this passage that we could say, you know what, if we do this, we won't go backwards, we'll go forward. Let me make a distinguishing definition or highlighting between milk and solid food. Milk is sustenance, nutrition, nourishment that has been processed by somebody else. If it's cow's milk, cow's milk is being processed by a cow. If it's mother's milk, it's been processed by mama. And the cow and mama and all the other animal kingdom has to gather food, take it in the raw, ingest it, process it, and then give it away in nice tiny little nutrition sizes that little tiny baby's tummy can handle because if you get a chunk of steak to a baby it ain't gonna work right he'll i don't starve. know if it mm -hmm. he'll starve he'll starve you give a he, meat to a baby they'll starve so you can't extract the nutrition out of what would be nutrition to us but not okay so he'll starve so babies have to have the right stuff but the writer of Hebrews is not validating the status or the state of the Hebrews. No, he's saying this is not a good thing. You should be able to eat solid meat, solid food, but you're, you, you went backwards. You should be teachers. Okay, so we've made enough point of that. Next phrase, next verse. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Now, uh, all of us go to some kinds of Christian gatherings. We don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is. We go to places, and we like to hear sermons. Thank God for sermons. Sermons are really good, especially for babies. Because what? Mr. Preacher Man went out and hunter-gathered. He's a hunter-gatherer. He went out and got stuff out of the Bible. He got in there, he started digging, and he got some gold, some rhema. 
And he got it, he ate the word, and it was sweet to the taste. It was sweeter than honey, and, and to him, it was really good. And so then he processed it and gave it now out in a nice three, five, seven-point sermon so the babies could handle it. So good. And if we're not careful, <laughs> if we're not careful, we'll just stay on baby food. Those who don't know how to go beyond milk haven't learned what? the word of righteousness for they're still babes okay now I'm getting somewhere I'm not trying to put other things down I am trying though to highlight a principle that the Hebrews whoever wrote him that is not ashamed of putting out in front of us okay because I'm getting someplace good someplace that what we're doing okay. so uh, if you can only take milk you're unskilled in the word of righteousness that's interesting. You see, maybe we have to hear the preacher man say, you're good, you're going to be all right, you're going to make it. We haven't been able to dig in the word and find out, wait a minute, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. He did impute to me righteousness, and I'm beginning to dig out the nutrition of this out of the word and begin to put it on and begin to live it. It's becoming fashioned in me rather than it's nice little mama's milk or pop I got the little top on the Gerber baby food jar <laughs> it's time for mama to spoon feed me that mushy pea stuff <laughs> sorry about that Sylvia <laughs> and so what's he going to say but solid food belongs to those who are of full age now think about it. If we still needed Mr. Preacher Man to make it in life, that'd kind of be like a 40-year-old son who never left home was still saying, Mama, can you feed me dinner tonight? We would say there's a problem. There's a dysfunction. There's a breakdown somehow. We said, this is not good. This is not good. We wouldn't smile on that kindly. But that's what the Hebrews writer is saying has happened. They still had to have mama's food because mama went out and did the hunter-gather thing, process it, and now give it. Okay, now solid food belongs to those, those who are of full age and those who, listen to this, by reason of use have their senses exercised. Now I'm getting down to the crux of it. What are activations? Exercises. And why do we open it up to all when you all come together, each of you has, why is that? So you don't just hear the preacher man or the worship man or the whatever do the exercising. You get to do the exercising. And guess what? The more exercising you do, you get to graduate beyond milk and you get to eat solid food. Solid food or meat belongs to those who are of full age and who have by reason of use, in other words, they've been using their exercise, their senses, they've been exercising them. They've been exercising their senses to discern between both good and evil. Now, good and evil, I don't know all that that means, but you're assessing, not just what my brain says, but what is my spirit man saying? What is my spirit saying here? I'm assessing. Is this me just in my flesh giving this thought coming to me? Or is this my spirit discerning between good and evil? In this case, we're not necessarily, I think, calling it sin or righteousness. We're talking be between discerning between what's spirit and what's flesh. Again, not carnality flesh, but just origin of the flesh. And as we move into these, we're beginning to say, you know what, I said that while I go, you know, and that one thing I just said out. And But the more I thought about it, it didn't really flow with everybody else. And so, you know, that was probably just my flesh. Now, there's no right or wrong and there's no grading here. You know, we don't pass or fail because we're in classroom. But the point is, we're wanting to grow. And so... My hope is that there's no one has to say anything like, ah, can we try that a different way? Because eventually we're going to learn how to flow together unto the goodness of the Lord. 
think that's a Jeremiah uh, passage, if I'm not mistaken, flow together under the goodness of the Lord. And how could we do that? Because we've all learned how to eat meat, discern between flesh and spirit. You know, the, the word of the Lord is sharper than any two-edged sword, able to divide, div asunder. divide asunder between the soul and the spirit. Okay, so that's why activations are a big deal for us. We try to do them as often as we can because we want to grow, right? Yeah. Let me go on now just to give you a little teaser. Next chapter, that was the end of chapter 5. Chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, now, let us leave the discussions of the elementary principles of Christ. <clears throat> Is that really in the Bible? <laughs> that sounds heretical to me. Yeah. <laughs> leave the elementary teachings of Christ? <laughs> well, why would he say that? Let's go back to, if I'm still a baby... I need somebody to process these elementary things and feed them to me gently. Not too much, Mama. It'll just spill out, and then you got a mess you got to clean up, Mama. But the writer of Hebrews is saying, I'd like to move beyond that now. It's time to move beyond baby Gerber food, Gerber baby food. Okay, it's time to move on. I want to move beyond. Not that that was bad. Babies need Gerber baby food, and babies need Mama's milk. It's totally appropriate. It's It couldn't be any other way. But at 40 years old, or whatever the age is, it's time to move on. And the writer says, I don't want to do that anymore. Okay? So he goes on to say that beyond the elementary principles or teachings of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Now, I don't know all the, what perfection means. I don't know if I've seen anybody that's reached that. But I do know that we are the righteousness of God in Christ, even on the days when I don't feel like it. Which is more true? My feelings or the Word of God? So what are we going to leave behind? Listen to this. This is, this is going to mess you up. This is in the Bible, I'm telling you. The first thing we're going to leave behind is the foundation of repentance. We're going to leave behind the foundation of repentance from dead works. In other words, don't do the bad things and don't try to do the good things to earn your way into heaven. Just lay, leave that behind. We're not going to talk about that anymore. We're not going to remind you. We're not going to. We want to move on beyond that. Okay? It's number two faith towards God. Are you kidding me? It's not that faith towards God is bad. He says, I don't want to teach about that anymore. Let's just assume that's already integrated into us. It's fashioned into, yes, of course, my faith is in God. And guess what? I'm beginning to have the faith of God. You guys got it. That's cool. I watched that. That's cool. That's, that blesses my heart big time, what just happened right there. That blesses my heart big time. Because we have, we're graduating. We're moving. We're growing. Well, number three, we're going to move beyond the doctrine of baptisms. Let's see. Water baptisms, Holy Ghost baptism, baptism, baptism into the body of Christ. Let's not teach that anymore. Can we assume that this is what we're doing? This is part of our life. This is this is already fashioned, integrated into you. Okay, isn't this crazy? This is stuff that we hear pretty frequently in our religious circles. But uh, how about laying on of hands? Can we move on from the teaching of laying on of hands? Let's just assume we do this. It's not that it's bad. No, it's really good. Let's, do we have to teach about it anymore? Let's move on. Okay? How about resurrection of the dead? What? Are, are you kidding me? Resurrection of the dead is the elementary teachings of Christ. <laughs> I understand he's talking about a resurrection of the, from the dead, uh, of the dead in the last resurrection. But I think it could also mean why do we have to teach about it? it's possible to have resurrection from the dead in this life? <laughs> possible. Number six. And I put numbers on her just because I wanted to get them in front of me. I want to see what I need to move on from. And eternal judgment. Of course, we all got to give an answer. 
Can we move on from that? Is it valid? Yes. Are we going to spend time on that? No, it's a given. It's a done deal. Let's move on from that. We don't teach that to try to get people scared into heaven. <laughs> We're moving on beyond that. We're moving into, what did it say? The word of righteousness. Yeah. And then the writer says, leaving all this behind, you, he's, he's just saying, boy, I long to go on beyond this. He says, and, these, and this we will do if God permits. Well, I think he's giving us a lot of permits. <laughs> he's helping us to learn how to create, uh, recognize, and engage in activations or exercises. Or what is it called again? Have their senses exercised. We're learning to exercise our senses. I believe we're growing up. I believe, according to the writer of Hebrews, this is at least one path. It, to him, it seems like it's a pretty big path to grow up into maturity. He calls it perfection. So anyway, the next time you wonder, like, ah, I don't know about all these activations, like, oh, yes, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's like me going to the gym and I put one more little weight on the barbell, you know? I think I can do this much today. So, uh, you guys okay with that? <laughs> Just give us a little paradigm so we have value for what we're doing. You know, because actually we, we didn't really follow the dogma of uh, organized religion too much this morning. <laughs> I don't know. We didn't do announcements. <laughs> and, and actually... I've got opening remarks right there. I didn't do any of them. <laughs> Drop mic right there, you know. I actually was going to pass out these uh, uh, clipboards. But you guys just got into it. And uh -huh. the flow just started happening. And it's like, where did our dogma of conventional religion go? It just went out the window. <laughs> the buck carried away. The buck, yeah, the buck stopped. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But you see, we begin collectively then adding to the, the leading of the Lord and just begin, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, that's good, too. And, oh, that washes my heart. Oh, that sets my feet to dance or whatever, you know. Okay, some comments and uh, somebody find out.